Start here, Star Citizen. Star Citizen is a multiplayer space sim with exploration, combat, FPS, and economy elements. It's available to play now in its development cycle, but Star Citizen can be quite a complex and daunting undertaking as a game especially to new players. This starter tutorial should help guide you from creating your account, to grabbing your first ship, to buying weapons, and piloting in some dogfights. Feel free to skip any sections that you feel are irrelevant to you. Uh, there are time skips in the description. Hopefully this contains everything you need to give you a running start in game. First, you'll need to make an account. Go to robertspaceindustries.com slash download. All of the steps are also listed here. Then click enlist to make an account. Fill out all the requested fields. Some require a bit more of an explanation. Login ID, no one else will ever see this. This is used to log into your account along with your password. Community moniker, this is how other citizens will ID you on the forums. Handle. This is your URL friendly name. This links to your profile and is used in game to add you as a friend or to invite you to games. Your moniker and handle can be the same but your login ID must be different. And it's always worth checking the terms of service to make sure you're happy. After you've made an account, you'll need a game package. You can grab one at the Star Citizen website again. You could go back to the download page and then click on get a game package there. Alternatively, you can go to robertspaceindustries.com slash pledge slash game dash packages. There are lots of ships available, but you can decide to upgrade your ship at a later date and also rent ships with the in-game virtual currency rec. Now, moreover, all ships will be able to be acquired in-universe with no money purchases necessary. All you have to buy is a game package and get a module pass if you wanted to play Arena Commander now. There are two baseline starter packages that contain everything you will need. The Aurora MR starter pack and the Mustang Alpha starter pack. I would suggest at this stage just grabbing the Mustang Alpha to start with anyway. It will give you a good feel of how fighting mechanics and manoeuvring work. Also, you can use a CCU or cross chassis upgrade to change that Mustang Alpha to the Aurora MR for free at any time anyway. This will cost you $45 plus any taxes applicable in your region. For example, I have to spend 20% extra on VAT. You get everything you need in this starter package, access to Arena Commander, the dogfighting module, a hangar, the social module, a ship, as well as some stuff for when the game goes live. If you purchase one of the other packages that's not a starter package, you will have to purchase separately an Arena Commander module. Occasionally there are also codes and promos that give access to a selection of ships, a hangar, and a game package for free for a limited period of time. But you have to spot them when they come along. They basically give you free access to the game for a limited period without any form of purchase. Now you need to download and install the game. Grab the installer again from that webpage, robertspaceindustries.com slash download. Go down, grab that launcher, run it, and pick a drive with the very least, at least 32 gigabytes of space to be safe to install to. You can now run the Star Citizen launcher from the desktop icon or from the directory you installed to. The downloader, once you're logged into it, will steal all of your bandwidth, but it does get the job done first. Once the game is downloaded and updated, you are ready to go. Click on launch, that will launch the game. I do suggest, however, closing that launcher, it can suck up system resources. So, after a loading screen, you spawn in your hangar. But it's empty, where's your ship? So, if you own any ships, you can put them into your hangar via the website. You need to go to My RSI on the Robert Space Industries website, which is in the top right, Hangar, then Configuration, drag your ship across, and then Save. You don't need to put them in your hangar to be able to use them in Arena Commander, though. You will also need to re-log any time you change anything on the website for it actually to take effect in-game. But, as you've just bought a ship, you'll want to see it. So now your ship's in the hangar, and we can take a look at it in all its glory. But first, maybe change into something more comfortable. Pressing insert will change the camera mode, and then you can press F6 while in your hangar to cycle through different armor sets. There are a selection of six armors currently, light, medium, and heavy, in two different major flavors, UEE Marine or Outlaw, so six in total. You can interact with certain objects too, hatches, doors, seats, by pressing the F key. Try taking a look around your ship, getting into it by the hatch underneath, uh, pressing F to open doors, climb ladders, and to get in the chair. 
and remember insert changes camera angles so you can get a different look at your ship. Once you're done with that, let's take a quick look at the social module. So the social module or Arc Corp is accessible directly behind where you spawn. Enter the double doors, then go to the lift on the right. Interact with the panel with F, click on the location that's listed there, and then click launch. After a quick loading screen, you'll be in Arc Corp. You can explore at your heart's content now. You can also press F12. That'll bring up a chat menu. Press enter to interact with that and talk to other nearby players. You can press F2 as well. That will toggle on and off your Moby Glass. This will enable you to see player names and item information. Remember, you are actually online with players now. There are a variety of emotes you can perform. You can press slash help to see them all. Remember, insert goes into third person. Another important feature that is accessible in the social module and the hangar module is the friends list. By pressing L, you bring up the friends list, and then you can type the handle of the player you want to add to your friends list, and then press add to add them. Click out of the box and press L again to close this menu. If you want to fly with a specific player, you will need to add them as a friend. Once you're done socialising and exploring, press escape and go back to your hangar. Now is the time for some actual flight training. The next thing you'll want to do is the basic flight tutorial. This will teach you all the basic skills necessary to fly and fight. Press escape, click on electronic access, arena commander, basic flight training and launch. You'll get to pilot the Gladius here too, which is a solid light dogfighter. And after this tutorial, you'll be ready for actual combat. But there are some choices and recommendations I would make first. Now you are a fresh young recruit who knows the bare basics of spaceflight and combat. At this stage, player versus player combat could be quite unforgiving if you don't know the meta, and may be quite frustrating to new pilots, so I'd avoid that at the moment. I would recommend, however, doing some racing or some Vandal Swarm to get used to your ship and your weapons. So let's jump into Vandal Swarm. You can press escape, go to electronic access, drone match. Drone matches are offline experiences. Vandal Swarm, choose either Broken Moon or Dying Star. Now, I prefer Dying Star, as there's less little asteroids to crash into, and the colouring or lighting in the level makes it easier for me to see the enemies compared to Broken Moon. Then click on Launch. Here you can put all that you've learnt so far into practice. You will have two wing persons to assist you in drone sim, and up to three others in multiplayer. Each wave in Vandal Swarm gets progressively harder, from wave 1 all the way up to wave 18, which is the final wave. Each third wave there was a Vandal Elite Glaive enemy. Every third wave that you clear, you get an ammo refill, which will top up all your missiles and ballistic weapons. You have three lives, see how far you can get. Some keys that you need to remember, press X to respawn if you're dead. Remember that T cycles t enemy targets, C targets the closest enemy, tap middle mouse to lock a missile and hold to fire if your ship has missiles. Pressing space is Newtonian space break. Dab double tapping W or S will either max or zero your throttle. If you press M while targeting an enemy, that will match speed to that target if possible. If a missile is locked to you, then press Z and X repeatedly to launch countermeasures. Later, you'll learn to evade them with manoeuvres, uh, looking at your radar, and using the right countermeasure for the right situation. But for now, just pressing Z and X is fine. Something quite important to mention is the difference between relative and interactive mode, and something that you might want to change. Relative, this is the default mode for stick users and joypad users. Your weapons are locked pointing forward, moving your input moves your whole ship. Interactive mode. This is the default mode for mouse and keyboard. Moving your mouse or your input will first move your ship's gimbaled weapons and then the ship. If you're a mouse user, it's worth trying out both modes. If you're on a stick or a gamepad, stick with relative mode. Ships feel and fly differently in these modes. Press Ctrl C to toggle these modes. But in Vandal Swarm, experiment with rolling, sliding, messing around in your ship, coupling, decoupling, crashing, blowing your ship up. If you don't get something, you, and that was in the flight tutorial, you can do the flight tutorial again any time, and you can even select where to start from in that tutorial. Um, something else, if you want to look at your ship, you can press insert again, insert, even in flight mode, controls the camera. And so you've played Vandal Swarm and you thought, mm, my loadout's pretty weak, I wish I had more guns, or I wish I could get another ship, or a sweet shield system. Well, you can. You can rent ships, weapons and equipment without any more funds necessary via the website using in-game 
REC or rental equipment credits that you can earn by playing Spectrum matches, the multiplayer matches of every Arena Commander mode except for Free Flight. To use or spend any rec or REC you might have, you need to go to the RSI website. Make sure you're logged in, then click on Store, Electronic Access, and this will bring up the rec shop or REC shop. Ships start from 2000 rec, and if you're still in the Mustang Alpha, I would suggest getting four Bulldog laser repeaters as soon as you can. This will make farming rec in Vandal Swarm much easier, and they're a very accurate weapon, especially for a new recruit. You can see the amount of REC you have acquired by clicking My RSI in the top right of the screen. After making any REC purchases, you must re-log into the game to see any effect. Now, to make changes or edit your ship, you've got to go to the holo table which is in your hangar. This is what the holo table looks like, it will be near you when you spawn. Go up to it and press F to interact with it. Use the mouse to select ships and items and then drag them into the centre or to where you want them. To move a tab, you need to left click and then drag either left or right. You can see the maximum size of weapons and equipment that can be amounted into any one hardpoint here as well by hovering over the hardpoint. For the Mustang Alpha, it can take four size 1 weapons and up to a size 2 shield. Once you are done with any edits, press F again to leave the holo table. You've got to do this to save the changes too. It is worth earning some REC in Vandal Swarm and racing in some Spectrum matches as opposed to drone matches. This will enable you to outfit your ship into being able to earn wreck even quicker. You will know the basics of how to play Star Citizen by now. But there is a lot more going on with this game, and once you are confident and have rented a ship that you like, it might be worth trying some of the other game modes. There's Free Flight, which is kind of like a multiplayer sandbox where players can fly about, kill each other if they want, land on some landing pads. Pretty simple, not much there. There's Squadron Battle, where two teams um, will get pitted against each other to try and kill the other team more than the other, uh, effectively. There's racing, obviously, battle royale, which is an all against all, and capture the core, which, again, two teams have to basically capture the enemy flag and bring it back to their base. Now, if you want to play the PvP option really here is Squadron Battle to start with. Squadron Battle will give you a nice taste of what PvP is like, and it's going to be less of a meta fest than battle royale is. But anyway, guys, there's loads more advanced tips. There's tips on getting your computer to run faster for Star Citizen, writing your own user.cfgs to make the game better, uh, or at least perform better. Uh, there's ways to set up your joystick. There's ways to set up your mouse. There's loads of programs and other things that you can install to improve your Star Citizen experience. Lots and lots going on. And I will put many links to lots of different videos in the description. You are your own pilot and you can decide what you need to learn, what you want to learn, and how you want to play the game. And that's one of the joys of Star Citizen, that it's a massive reward for players that want to try and find out more information about the game, that want to try and improve their experience, and that want to be better pilots, even at this stage in the alpha. A lot more is coming, guys. I'm incredibly excited about Star Citizen, and I hope you are too. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the description below, or drop us an email, or whatever. Contact us, and we'll try and answer your questions. You take care, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.